So, Father God, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your presence among us, Father God. I thank you in the name of Jesus that there is no weapon formed against us that shall prosper. But every voice and every demonic force, every work of darkness, every work of evil that rises up against us shall fall in the name of Jesus. For the Lord God says that it is time for his daughters to arise. There's nothing about your life that has happened to you, says God, that cannot be absolutely and completely redeemed, made holy, made strong, made repaired um, and, and whole as if it never happened to you, says God. The same spirit that rose Christ from the dead lives and dwells in each one of you, says the Father. And God wants us to come into awareness and alignment with our true spiritual identity as daughters of the king, as, as royal daughters of the king, as those that carry um, his signet ring, his authority over darkness and over evil in our lives and in our communities and in our workplaces. God says there is nothing that has happened to you thus far in your life that cannot be fixed, that cannot be mended, that cannot be made whole. There is no weakness that cannot be turned into my strength, says the Lord. There is no anger that cannot be melted with my love, says God. There is no area of woundedness that cannot be comforted by my Holy Spirit, says, says the Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, we bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for giving us courage this day to continue pressing into you, Lord God, and to continue pressing in for the complete victory over every area of woundedness, over every area of loss and grief, over every area of fear and torment. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father God, for strengthening us by your spirit, Lord, this day, that there is no weapon formed against us that shall prosper, that the only way that the enemy can defeat us is if we drop our swords. Father God, that your word says, that the enemy ro roams around like a roaring, roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, which means that we are not all devourable. You have given us authority in the earth over our lives and over the circumstances of our lives. If we will simply come into alignment with what your word says, who we truly are in you, who we are in Christ. And so, Father God, I thank you in the name of Jesus for infusing us, Lord God, today with a new stamina, with a new fortitude, with a new steadfastness to continue pressing forward in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for reminding us to call out for your grace and your strength when our flesh feels weary. God, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, there is... <coughs> There is no mental illness, there is no physical illness, there is no emotional heart woundedness or sickness that God cannot or will not completely heal, deliver, and set us free from, says God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't care how long anxiety or depression, how many centuries it goes back in your bloodline, it is not something that you have to tolerate for the rest of your days, says the Lord. I don't care how far back the anger and bitterness and grieving and loss goes in your, in your bloodlines. God says, I can eradicate it and heal it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. He says he does not care how long the addictions have been there, whether it be to food or whether it be to shopping or whether it be to other forms of self-soothing comfort. It does not matter how many how many centuries the addictions have gone back in your family line, says God. Through, through the blood of Jesus Christ, it is all redeemable. It is all able to be healed and set free and delivered, says the Lord. Thank you, Lord God. It is not my will for you to live in oppression, says God. It is not my will for you to live under a heavy weight of oppression and depression and a heavy spirit, says God. Rise up, daughters. Rise up in the authority that I've given you. Speak those things that be not as though they already are.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. 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 We thank you, Father God, that there is no weight upon our shoulders that you cannot alleviate. There is no problem in our life that does not have a solution through you, Lord God. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter how many generations back the enemy has passed down darkness. You are completely able and willing and available to anoint us with your dunamis power, Father God, that's already resident within us. So, Lord, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your presence here even now. But we thank you for your encouragement in our lives today. I thank you, Father God, that we are your beloved daughters in whom you are well pleased. We are your beloved daughters in whom you are well pleased. There is no part of you that desires to reject us or criticize us or belittle us. There is no part of you that is not even in your heart toward us. We are your beloved daughters in whom you are tickled pink and delighted with, says God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I hear the heart of Abba Father pleading with us as his daughters to no longer allow the enemy to rob us of the joy and the peace and the love that he has for us in his presence. There are lies that the enemy has told you for years and years and years. And I'm asking you to take those lies and compare them with my word. And I'm asking you to choose to allow to allow me to renew your mind with my word, says God. My word is yes and amen. My desire for you is, is beyond your human comprehension. My love for you, my grace for you, my kindness towards you, my generosity towards you is beyond your natural human capacity of understanding. It is, it is farther than the highest heavens and it is deeper than the lowest hell, says God. He says, and I have been pursuing you and chasing after you your whole life. And I'm asking that you allow me to catch you and to overtake you, says God. Stop letting the enemy rob you of precious time with me. Because it is in those moments of solitude alone with me where I will speak tenderly to your heart and I will reveal those things to you that you're not yet aware of, that, that, that need, uh, that your, your conscious mind needs revelation of in order to walk in the authority of it, says the Lord. Thank you, Father. So Father God says, let me take you on some daddy-daughter dates. <laughs> he says, let me take you on some daddy-daughter dates. Oh, wow, you guys, this one is deep. Most of you have never had a true pictorial image, an experiential image and knowledge of what it means to have a kind, loving, generous, generous, over-the-top loving father. And he says, and I desire to pour that out upon you. So God understands that that what we've experienced in our earthly, in the relationship that we've had with our earthly fathers has been in no way, shape or form. It has not given us, how do I say this? It has not given us that image or that picture or that experience of what it's like to be 
the beloved daughter of a of an overly extravagant loving father who delights in his daughters but it's also not god's fault that we haven't experienced that if that makes sense we didn't experience that because our fathers and our mothers didn't experience that and it was passed down if that makes sense so God understands that that what he's trying to give us, not what he's trying to give us in experience with him and what he's trying to give us in an image or a pictorial revelation is something that we've not experienced. So it's kind of hard for us to envision it because we've never experienced it. I don't know if that makes sense, but he understands that if that makes sense. But at the same time, he's saying, come into my presence and let me show it to you. Let me give you those images of what it is like to be a beloved, delightful child of a daughter. I mean, of, of a father who is over the top tickle pink about you. And it says, and, and, and keep coming back to me, says God, so that I can bathe you in that experience over and over and over and over again. Because, <clears throat> guys, I'm sorry about all the phlegm is coming up because it's morning time. I apologize. It is the repeated washing of his presence and his love over our soul that will break down the areas of fear and distrust that we have with him. It is that it is us experiencing his magnanimous love over and over and over again that will break down any areas of hardness of heart and anger and frustration with him. And it will give us not only new eyes to see him, but new eyes to see ourselves. And um, I'm just going to wait on the Holy Spirit and see if there's anything else. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord God. I hear the Lord saying it's not your responsibility to manage the affairs of your life. It is not your responsibility. If you're truly going to be a daughter, and that doesn't mean that he doesn't, he doesn't allow us to be responsible. But if you're truly going to be a daughter, then we have to understand that it's not, it's ultimately not our responsibility to manage the affairs and the decisions and the circumstances of our life. If we're truly a daughter of a king, if we're truly the daughter of a loving father, then it's his job to lead and guide us. And all, all it is is our job to just listen and obey. He gets, to, he, he gets to be the heavy. He gets to make all the big decisions. And if he makes the decision wrong, then it's on him. It's not on us. If that makes sense. So, but God is saying that sometimes we are encumbered in our life because we are still trying to maintain too much control over the decisions in our daily life instead of just giving it over to him and saying, daddy, you tell me what you want me to do. You fix this, you provide the solution, you lead and guide me. Um, and so uh, some of the heaviness that weighs upon us is, is us just not giving those things into, into his care. God does his best work when we are at rest. And I'm not talking about laying down, sleeping rest. I mean, that when we are in a place of rest, of resting in him saying, Father, I'm just giving you this. I'm just giving it to you and I'm trusting you and you're going to lead and guide me by your spirit and whatever it is that you want me to do, uh, you know, whatever instruction you have for me, I'm open and I'll be obedient, but I'm leaving it in your hands. And so sometimes we create our own stress and our own oppression and our own heaviness because we're trying to carry weights that he's saying, will you please just let me be daddy? But because we didn't have daddies that, that carry those burdens for us, we don't know what that's like. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm just going to wait one more time. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
Lord, we just worship and adore you. Lord, I speak your Zoe life, your abundant life. Your, Lord, your word says that out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. So I speak to the presence of God, the light and glory of God, the dunamis power of God that is resident within the spirit of each one of us. And in the name of Jesus, Father God, I thank you for causing that part of you, the essence of who you are that lives and dwells in us. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I'm asking that you stir up that um, miracle working power within us and that you would lead and guide us by your spirit today in Jesus' name.